So here I'm just going to go over um, some of the different path functions in Inkscape. Um, and I have most of them set out here with the um, keyboard shortcut and I'm going to give you examples of what each does and some ideas of how to use them. Um, so just for reference, the path bar is up here at the top in your taskbar and the um, ones that we're going to be focusing on are from union down to outset. Um, and we'll go through them one by one. So the first one is union, um, which is either you go to path union or control plus and all of the keyboard shortcuts are um, right here kind of grayed out. And what this one does is it merges two shapes and they no longer have their own individual paths. Um, they become one shape. So you can see the difference here is this line in the middle versus this one is the same outline, but it's no longer two layered shapes. It is um, one full shape. So then for the next one, this is called difference, and the shortcut is control minus, and what difference does is it extracts oops, the um, top shape from the bottom. So you can see here the intersection part is this dotted line, and when we do path difference, um, the top one is removed and it leaves this part right here this L shape that's the difference of these two shapes when the front one here is on top and then I'm going to show you um, the difference here with this back shape in the front instead so when you select them both it still has this um, dotted rectangle showing you the in the areas where they overlap and if we do um, difference it leaves the bottom part for this one um, because there was a different shape in front this time um, and then intersection it is exactly what it sounds like it leaves any areas that intersect so anything that overlaps and for this one it would be that dashed rectangle in the middle and we can do path intersection or we can do control star and then it leaves this little square from where those items overlap the next one is exclusion and this is the opposite of intersection so it removes those overlapping areas so in this case that box and the shortcut for this one is the control um, and then that up that little carrot I think it's called um, that is the shortcut. So this one leaves um, the outside boxes and removes that overlapping area in the middle. So the next one is division. Um, and I'm going to show you again on the two different versions here. So we have this one where the um, front piece or the bottom piece is in the front and division extracts the top from the bottom. So it's going to remove um, the top one from the bottom one. And what that does here is it got rid of um, this piece here at the bottom and it takes the overlapping part of the front one and cuts it through the overlapping area of the back and then they can be separated out. So it divides it into multiple pieces based on the overlapping area and which piece is on top. So I'm gonna do it again here. And as you can see, it just does the opposite because in that case, this piece was the top. So it removes the top piece from the bottom piece and creates two separate um, pieces for you from those overlapping shapes. So the next row, these are a little bit different. Um, they're not necessarily the same functional use, I guess. Like they do different things um, than these where it's combining or dividing your shapes. Um, so this one, it cuts the bottom object's stroke where it intersects the top path and it will automatically remove your fill. So what that means is where this object right here, this highlighted one, intersects with this square in front, it's going to cut it there. So we can do cut path and you can see there's no um, fill at this time. So I'm just going to turn on the fill so you can see it. And what it did is it cut the path where these points meet. So you can take this up here and this one, and it'll give you that full square, um, the top 
object here was removed. It cut the bottom object where they intersect. So that one's a little harder to explain, but visually you can see where the intersection points are, right here and right here, and it cut you that shape. And then for the next one, this is another way to combine two shapes, but unlike union, the overlapping areas are not affected. So right now we have two different shapes that can be moved separately from each other, but if we do combine, it makes them one shape, but they still have this stroke here. So if you were to cut this on your laser, um, my understanding would be that it would cut around all of those stroke places, and since it's filled, it would engrave this um, but just to be clear it's one piece still um, it's not grouped or anything and it is now combined um, but it hasn't been unioned because there is still this um, stroke in the middle so it just outlines you can see when they're highlighted it outlines that rectangle in the middle um, and then the next two are really helpful for resizing your objects. Inset, I primarily use this one when I am creating a scored backer to help with placement. Um, if you score the design exactly how it is to be cut, then you'll still see the outline of your score lines on your backer. So if you do a subtle inset, um, it allows you to kind of hide those score lines while still giving yourself um, something to use as a guide. So inset is control and then the inside parentheses. That will do it. Um, I have mine set up to do it by one pixel. And then if you do shift alt and that parentheses, it will go in by 10. Um, according to the shortcuts. I have changed mine a little bit, um, so they might not be exact, but those are the shortcuts that I found when I was researching this for you. Um, the normal one is just the regular jump, and then the shift alt is supposed to make it that 10 pixel um, change. So you can see that this shape, now that I've done inset a few times, fits inside of the other one. And so this would come in handy if the darker blue object um, is my cut shape and the scored um, backer has this smaller lighter blue shape. We can bring that to the front and you can see that you can no longer see that scored outline so you know exactly where to place your object without being able to see that you have an outline to go off of. Um, an outset is going to be the exact opposite. What this one does is it increases the size of your shape. So again, you can do control that uh, closed parenthesis, I think it is, or you can do shift alt and it'll make it even bigger. So then in this case, you can see that the um, new darker blue one is significantly larger than our original box that we started with. So then down here, I'm going to show you a couple different um, uses for some of the other functions. We have break apart. So at the top, we did combine already, um, and it left us with this shape, which I've already done here to show you. If you go into path, there is a break apart option. And what you can do is click that and it will revert you back to your original two shapes. This doesn't work um, with union because that one has already been welded together, so to speak. But because this one still has those outlines, it can be broken apart. And break apart can be helpful to use with your compound paths um, if you need to adjust one of the fields without messing with the entire thing. Like if you have text and you needed to make the inside of your A larger, for example, you could break apart your path. Um, adjust that and then exclude it back together so that it um, creates your compound path again. So this is the exclusion example here and I can do break apart and it gives me the two pieces um, that were on the sides. So here it's all one piece and now they are broken apart. So the two parts that had um, a shape to them 
are no longer connected. They can be moved and rearranged as needed. And if I wanted to put them back together, slightly offset, I could go in here and say um, union. If I wanted to meld them together like that, I could say um, exclusion. If I wanted these overlaps deleted, there are different um, functions that you can use and you can learn how to use them all together um, to create some really cool shapes. So one more um, path tool that you're going to need to know if you're creating files is how to convert your text into paths because Glowforge will not read anything that is text. It will make you turn it into um, a path before it will let you upload it. So the um, command here is shift control C. Um, and I'm just gonna show you on regular text when you double click, you can highlight it still, um, and you can edit it. What we want to do is convert this to a path by doing object to path. Oops, object to path. And then when you click on it, it will give you the individual letters and their um, nodes. So that's how you can tell when something is a vector is when it has all these nodes that you can adjust your shape and you can no longer edit that text um, from double clicking on it. So what we're going to do here is we are going to union that back together so that when we double click on it, it's all one piece. It's been turned into one path and your letters will be connected um, no matter how you move them around your document. So the last part from this section that I want to show you is that you can create a knockout, it's called, um, where you have something inset into another item. So here we're using text and we're using a rectangle and we're going to use the object to path. Um, we're going to use copy and paste. We're going to use offset and exclusion. So the steps are over here. What we're starting with is our text and we are going to do that same object to path and then we have our letters. So what we can do here is union our letters to make it one piece, and I'm going to um, duplicate this. You can also do copy and paste, which is control C, control V, if you're on a Windows computer like I am. Um, and if you're on a Mac, I don't have all of the shortcuts, but I think that most of the time they're usually command and then the same um, keys as you would use for um, a Windows computer, but I am not 100% sure on that just because I don't have one myself. Um, so then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to outset this and I'm going to do it three times seems good so that it's nice and thick and we're going to place it on top of our rectangle here and then I'm going to select them both and do path exclusion and then I'm just going to take my text and place it inside of that new field I made and this is a cool way that if we wanted to make a sign that had some like overlapping pieces this way you can um, fit in your your text here into that blank space without it having to be like perfectly snug together and it gives you this cool little outline look um, so these are just some of the Inkscape path functions that I think are important to know when you are creating files um, and honestly just creating anything in Inkscape. It's really helpful to know how to manipulate your shapes and put them together and what will help you to create some really fun um, images when you put them together.